now I was talking about you being a scientist on Earth, but say you were a scientist uh, that were shipped over to Europa to investigate if there's life, what would you look for in terms of signs of life? Life is unmistakable, I would say. The way that life transforms a planet surrounding it is not the kind of thing that you would expect from the physical laws alone. So it's, uh, I would say that as soon as life arises, it creates this compartmentalization. It starts pushing things away. It starts sort of keeping things inside that are self. And there's a whole signature that you can see from that. So uh, when I was organizing my Meaning of Life symposium, my, uh, my, my friend who's an astrophysicist, um, basically uh, we, were, we were deciding on what would be the themes for the, for the symposium. And then uh, I said, well, we're gonna have biology, we're gonna have physics. And she's like, oh, pff, come on, F biology is just a small part of physics. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's a small part of physics, and, right? And uh, I mean, in, in, in many ways it is, but my immediate answer was, no, 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 wait, life, challenges physics, it supersedes physics, it, it sort of f fights against physics. And that's what I would look for in Europa, I would basically look for this fight against physics, for anything that sort of signatures of not just entropy at work, not just things diffusing away, not just gravitational pulls, but clear signatures of, remember when I was talking earlier about this whole selection for environment, selection for biospheres, for ecosystems, for this multi-organism, form of life. And I think that's sort of the, the first thing that you can look for, you know, chemical signatures that are not simply predicted from the reactions you would get randomly. Such a beautiful way to look at life. So you're basically leveraging some energy source to enable you to resist the physics of the universe. Fighting against physics. <laughs> but that's that's the first transformation. If you look at humans, we're way past that. What do you mean by transformation? So, so basically, there's there's layers. I sort of see life. You know, when we when we talk about the meaning of life, life can be construed at many levels. We talked about life in the simplest form of sort of the ignition of evolution, and that's sort of the basic definition that you can check off. Yes, it's alive. But uh, when Alexander the Great was asked, <laughs> "To whom do you owe?" your life to your teachers or to your parents? And Alexander the Great uh, answered, I owe to my parents the zine, the life itself, and I owe to my teachers the F zine, like euphony. F means good, the opposite of cacophony, which means, you know, bad. So F zine, in his uh, words, was basically living a human life, a proper life. So basically we can go from the zine <laughs> to the F zine. And that transformation has taken several additional leaps. So basically, you know, life on Europa, I'm pretty sure has gotten to the stage of A makes B makes C makes A again. But getting to the F zine is a whole other um, level. And that level requires cooperation. That level requires altruism. That level requires specialization. Remember how we were talking about the RNA specializing into DNA for storage, proteins, and then compartmentalizations. And if you look at prokaryotic life, there's no nucleus. It's all one soup of things intermingling. If you look at eukaryotic life, again, you for true, good, you know. So a eukaryote, basically has a nucleus. And that's where you compartmentalize further the organization of the information storage from all of the daily activities. If you look at a you know human body plan or any animal, you have a compartmentalization of the germline. You basically have one lineage that will basically be saved for the future generations. And everything outside that lineage is almost superfluous. If you think about it, the rest of your body, all it does is ensure that that lineage will make it to the next generation, that these germ lines will make it to the next generation. The rest is packaging. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to be so blunt. Yeah. And if you look at nutrition, you know, we're deuterostomes. What does deuterostome mean? Deutero means second, where the, this is the second mouth. The first mouth is actually down here, it's the esophagus. Hmm. 
So dirtless domes have evolved a second layer of eating, kind of like alien with the two mouths. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can think of us as alien, where the first mouth is up here, and then the second mouth is down there. Is, and it, of course, is, is the first mouth just the, the, the physical manipulation of the food to make correct, it more consumable? Correct, correct. And basically, again, you know, so if, you look at, if you look at a worm, yeah. it's an extremely simple life form. It yeah. basically has a mouth, it has an anus, yeah. and it has you know, just some organs in between that consume the food and just spit, spit out poop. Yeah. Um, humans are basically a fancy form of that. So you basically have the mouth, you have the digestive tract, and then you have limbs to get better at getting food. You have eyesight, hearing, et cetera, to get better at getting food. Yeah. And then you have, of course, the germline and all of this food part, it's just auxiliary to the germline. So you basically have layers of addition, of compartmentalization, of specialization on top of this zine to get all the way to the F zine. Yeah, so like the worm is like Windows 95, very few features, very basic. And then us humans are like Windows Vista, or Windows 10, whatever it is. Well, uh, a, a, few, a few innovations beyond that. But yeah, beyond that, all right. <laughs> we're, I don't know. We're Linux, Windows 3000, at least put it that way. <laughs> so, okay, that's such a fascinating way to look at life as a set of transformations. Exactly. So like, is there some interesting transformations through our history here on earth? That like appeal to you? Of course. So and what are the most brilliant innovations and transformations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is such a fascinating question. Of course, like, you know, we're talking about basic, basic life forms and we're talking about eukaryotic life forms. And then the next big transformation is multicellular life forms where the specialization separates the germline from everything else that accompanies it and, and sort of carries it. And then that specialization then sort of has this massive new innovation, like above the second mouth, which is this massive brain. And this massive brain is basically something that arises much, much later on. Basically, you know, notochords, like having the first spinal cord, this whole concept that along with the, these very simple layers, you basically now have a coordinating agent. And this coordinating agent is starting to make decisions. And remember when we were talking about uh, free will, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, as a worm is hunting for food, oh, it has plenty of free will. It can choose to, you know, follow chemotaxis to the left or chemotaxis to the right. Yeah. And maybe that's free will because it's unpredictable beyond a certain level. So um, you basically now have more and more decision-making and coordination of all of these different body parts and organs by a central operating system, a central machine that basically will control the rest of the body.